positioning side and also MDI requirements. Um, I will just uh, give you the flavor of my talk. I will introduce uh, some detector technologies that are currently considered and then go into details in, uh, to the list of systematic uncertainties at the Higgs production threshold and the Z pole run, assuming 10 to the minus three luminosity precision and 10 to the minus four luminosity precision at these two center of mass energies respectively. And I will just briefly show you some results on the impact of the upstream material on lumical and lumical shower leakage into the tracking region. Okay, this is a very familiar uh, drawing that we uh, saw so many times uh, in the course of this workshop. Uh, as you know, Lumical is placed at the distance of 950 millimeters from the interaction point. Its geometrical coverage translates into fiducial volume between 53 and 79 milliradians, where the shower is fully contained. Uh, two technology options are currently considered, BGO scintillating crystals, 20 radiation lengths long. Of course, they should be very modular. Due to the high density and high atomic number of bismuth, the radiation length is small and consequently only a radius, which means compact shower and good resolution in E and theta. Also, readout for this type of calorimeter should be uh, simpler than, uh, than for the uh, classical sandwich type. Uh, slight disadvantages are relatively high refractive index and consequently lower light, uh, light output than for the other scintillators. Um, it, it is slightly slow as well with the uh, 300 nanoseconds uh, uh, light uh, decay time. However, bunch spacing at CPC is 1.8 microseconds, so it is sufficiently fast. I should mention that this is a, a proven technology used at L3 Experiment and Lab. Uh, the other uh, possibility is the silicon tungsten sandwich calorimeters proposed basically for ILC and then adopted for all the other E plus E minus uh, uh, colliders. Again, this is a, um, a sandwich type of calorimeters with, where one radiation length thick absorbers are interspersed with uh, pixelated silicon sensors. Uh, the fact that you can uh, uh, adjust uh, uh, your segmentation to your requirements uh, uh, ensures uh, excellent uh, uh, reconstruction of the polar angle. This structure is compact, smaller radius is small, of order of two centimeters, uh, so providing excellent resolution uh, in E as well. Again, readout due to the uh, design of, of your silicon sensor is more complex. Both options could be supplemented with additional layer of either pixelated silicon or diamond to enable calibration, electron photon separation, and polar angle measurement with precision equivalent to one micron in radial uncertainty. Uh, I will go now to the main topic, uh, which is the luminosity measurement itself. This is a rather busy slide with, with a lot of text. Text uh, where I actually would like to point out that even counting experiment and BABA uh, and luminosity measurement is basically counting experiment is non-trivial when you are allowed to be mistaken as one in a thousand or one in a ten thousand. Namely, you start from this formula where this is your count, but then you have to calculate your cross-section in the very sp same geometrical and phase space. Uh, in order to keep it simple, our suggestion is to keep to place detector at, at the outgoing beam, so where your event has a symmetry with respect to the detector axis. Of course, both quantities has to be known at the level you want uh, your luminosity to be determined. But when you are counting, there is, there, you have a possibility of this be, uh, miscounts due to the physics and beam-induced processes of the momentum electrons we learn from FCC, we don't have to worry very much about them, though they were the main source of uncertainty in luminosity measurement at lab. For some of these effects, you can correct your count if you know their uncertainties. Also, detector is not 100% efficient. Everything can be misplaced from the interaction point with respect to detector and vice versa. 
Then it is important question, how do, well do we know the available center of mass energy because of the cross-section calculation? And in addition, how do you know the observables you are basing your um, luminosity method on? All in all, this comes quite untrivial, and this is a long list of systematic uncertainty. We addressed basically most of them. Beam-related uncertainties, detector-related uncertainties, what is left is the, the uncertainty of the sampling term, and uh, uh, basically various effects from physics interaction, either physics background, and I'll see if I'm corrected, it's the major source of uncertainty in, uh, in luminosity measurement. Uh, then various sources of Baba collinearity. Beam Strahlung is hopefully not that pronounced as linear machines, but it has to be considered. And as I said, machine-related background. The basic mechanisms that these, uh, uh, these, these things are affecting your luminosity measurement are either through the modification of acceptance region, which could happen directly if something is displaced, uh, or uh, effectively, uh, Baba particles would see different acceptance than a nominal if they are, uh, there is a loss of collinearity, or if Baba uh, collision frame is boosted uh, with respect to the laboratory frame, which, which happens actually in case of a beam strong and, and other radiated processes. Then you should know your phase space very well, as I pointed out, and the available center of mass energy for the cross-section calculation. And of course, you by the uncertainty of, uh, of uh, your variables you are uh, basing uh, your, your measurement on. Uh, this is just a reminder, uh, why do we need luminosity precision? Because at physics talks these days, and we are, I mean, competing a bit between various future projects, we are pushing the precision limit and telling that we need uh, the ultimate precision of this and that, but actually, why do we need it? So I think once in a while, it's, it's not a bad idea to remind ourselves why it is needed, and this is some kind of a general knowledge also from CPC and from other projects. The list of processes uh, uh, where 10 to the minus three precision in luminosity should be sufficient. Some of them are very interesting, like single photon production with missing energy or de-photon production to probe various beyond the standard model of physics. While 10 to the minus four, at least this is uh, my personal view, come from the Z0 total hadronic cross-section, and, and namely if we would like to access high order correction in, in uh, uh, fermion pair production. But nevertheless, 10 to the minus 4 sensitivity should be proven to the dedicated physics analysis. Do we really need it, uh, and what, what, what is the exact impact of it? Uh, these are assumptions of the study. Everything is done at the generator level. Uh, um, basically, everything is projected on the, on the, on the lumical front plane, including uh, initial state radiation, including um, uh, assuming the detector is centered at the outgoing beam. This is very important because uh, if this is true, then in a very simple way, you can require asymmetric acceptance in theta as it has been done in lab. And as you are going to see, it will either lead to a cancellation of some systematic uncertainties or it will significantly relax the requirements. So in order to do so, you, uh, you really have to have luminometer center at the outgoing beam. What is this symmetric acceptance doing to your selection? You are basically asking different volumes uh, on the left and right hand side subsequently and measuring luminosity that way you cancels out all the systematics that would arise from your left right asymmetry. In addition, this is a very useful criterion on coplanarity that it's helping uh, uh, out to suppress background from physics processes. At some point we will have assumption on that. So it has been done with 10 million events for each systematic effect. Every effect is taken as a 100% effect. Once you know the uncertainty, you can correct for it. But now we assume 10 to the minus 3 at the Higgs production uh, threshold and 10 to the minus 4 at the Z0 pole. 
uh, just to, 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 to mention that uh, basically particles are generated a bit outside of the detector fiducial volume in, in order to allow events with final state radi radiation to contribute. So we go, to the, to, we go through that long list. Um, possibility that there is systematic bias on beam energy. So the sign of delta is the same. It is causing two delta E shift in the center of mass energy has not significant effect of counting bias, but basically, if you want luminosity uncertainty of 10 to the minus 4, you have to know the average center of mass energy at the level of 10 to the minus 4 for the cross-section calculation. At, at Z0 pole, it means a few MeV, so this is, a, this is quite challenging. Asymmetric bias on beam energy would cause the longitudinal boost of the center of mass frame of the colliding particles, uh, giving some relativistic velocity beta with respect to the lab frame. Effectively, it is equivalent to loss of, loss of counts, and for 10 to the minus 3, you should know uh, beta or uh, this uh, 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 asymmetry in beam energy is better than, than 10 to the minus 3. Beam energy spread is always present. Uh, again, it gives longitudinal boost in analogy to the previous effects. Uncertainty of the Gaussian width of the beta distribution is actually the source of uncertainty of BABA counts. This is with lab style cut. We are quite relaxed. While for uh, if asking for the fiducial, full fiducial volume of both sides of the detectors, uh, the beam spread must be known within 20%. This is apparently not an issue, uh, so we can go with this type of a selection. However, it's always nice to be insensitive rather than be sensitive. Uh, longitudinal offset on the interaction point uh, uh, can, can happen if interaction point is uh, not equidistant between left and right uh, halves of the detector, so it is shifted for some amount uh, delta uh, Z. And uh, with uh, uh, a classical fiducial volume selection, uh, th uh, this shift has to be uh, controlled at a level of one millimeter. Uh, of course, it goes up to the 10 millimeters if you use uh, a symmetrical uh, uh, polar uh, angle definition on the left and right side. Uh, this implies a requirement on the synchronization of colliding beams better than uh, 15 picoseconds in case of the asymmetric cuts. Then it is possible to have radial offset of the detector axis with respect uh, uh, to the outgoing beam. This is so-called tilt of the, of, the, of the calorimeter, which again modifies the acceptance region. Basically, particles uh, with a uh, heat lumical at larger radius, and you, you will have a, a narrowing reconstruction of, of your with the uh, um, lab style cut can tolerate this offset at the level of one millimeter and approximately 10 times requirement if you ask for the full fiducial volume. Then radial fluctuations of the relative position of the lumical are also possible caused by vibrations, by thermal stress, and so on. Again, with lab style cut, you are relaxed here. Without it, you need to control the fluctuations at the level of 0.1 millimeter. Also, axial fluctuations uh, of the uh, relative position between interaction point and lumical occurs uh, if, if not for other reason than from the fact that longitudinal dimension of the bunch is not negligible. Again, this is something that modifies the acceptance region. You are relaxed with lab style cut and uh, can tolerate it up to, up to 10 millimeters. Of course, sensitivity is always larger if you require fiducial volume both left and right. Then it is possible to have azimuthal twist between left and right halves of the luminometer. Uh, which, is, uh, which basically translates into the uncertainty of the azimuthal angle. Azimuthal angle uh, is not the very best measured uh, at, uh, uh, in any forward region at any uh, E plus T minus ex experiment. Nevertheless, it is very useful to reduce physics background from two photon processes. So here we ask uh, for the Baba coplanarity with 7.5 degrees in order to have a, a 0 0.1 uncertainty of counts, it, it follows that azimuthal twist of up to 6 milliradians can be tolerated. 
inner radius of the lumical is uh, among the uh, most, uh, uh, let, let's say, critical mechanical issues. Lab style cut would not uh, uh, help you here because the, it doesn't have anything to do with the left, left right symmetry. And uh, it origins from the uh, Barber cross section dependence with the polar angle as 1 over theta to the third. Uh, 10 micrometers uncertainty translates into 10 to the minus 3 luminosity uncertainty. If you scale it to 10 to the minus 4, you automatically know you would have to control it at the micron level. Uh, distance between left and uh, right side of the lumical is again a possible effect, assuming here that they are shifted symmetrically with respect to the interaction point. Again, it's changing acceptance. This is the nominal position, and 10 to the minus 3 corresponds of a distance of approximately half a millimeter over 950 millimeters. What with the frequency scanning interferometry and uh, other available techniques should not really be a problem. Uh, also, we looked into the spread of the measured radial shower position uh, that uh, um, basically, again, is giving you uncertainty in the polar angle. You are quite relaxed with the lab style cut, so up to one millimeter uh, radial spread can be controlled. In addition, you can control also 0 0.1 millimeters because uh, with the sandwich type of calorimeters means fine sensor segmentation. This should not be an issue. This is an overview of, of all the systematic effects and may basically there are, I, I think, two major messages. One is with lab style selection, life is much easier. You are up to 10 times relaxed with respect to uh, the situation when you ask the full food dusha volume both left and right. Inner radius is very important, but to control it at the level of 10 microns should not be a problem. Center of mass energy has to be known at the level of 100 MeV, so 10 to the minus 4. Uh, for the cross-section calculation, it has been controlled at that level at lab, so this all seems to be feasible. At Z0 pole, it is, of course, more complicated. And uh, uh, there, inner radius should be controlled at the level of 1 millimeter. It was 4.4 and opal. We, we, we learned from colleagues from FCC, it's 2 millimeters. So basically, this is the order of magnitude uh, we should, we should uh, uh, take into account. Distance between calorimeters should be controlled at the 80 microns level over 1 meter distance. This is something that should not be a problem. However, it seems to be completely impossible to know this center of mass energy at the level of UMEV. But then it brings us to the question of physics. Where do you really need 10 to minus 4 in luminosity? And if your signal of the relevant physics process has the same cross-section dependence with the center of mass energy as Baba, the effect will, the effect will cancel out. So, uh, Though this is, a, this is a quite an obstacle, it should not really be a problem for a dedicated physics analysis. There are some other effects I provide uh, that we looked into the linear collider. For instance, I provide some references like a sampling term and so on. Uh, so I conclude with the systematics. Two interesting study done within the, the Lumical group are uh, impact of the upstream material on Lumical for two CPC designs, version 4 and version 5. Uh, basically, uh, 120 GV positrons uh, are uh, generated um, in a cone around the detector axis uh, with energy and momenta uh, uh, uniformly spread. To conclude that primary particles keep most of, that, of their energies before entering the lumical, I purposely uh, choose this uh, linear scale uh, so to see that everything is really seated in the, in the very first bin while the momentum gets uh, uh, negligibly smeared. This is for beryllium beam pipe. For version 5, where there are some copper segments, actually the situation is not that glorious with this uh, uh, due, due, due to the fact that uh, the, the particles get scattered uh, of, uh, of the copper parts and uh, the primary particles are losing uh, uh, up to 30% of their energy in the, in the fiducial, uh, entering the lumical fiducial volume. 
This is another interesting this study. It's the uh, simulation of the shower leakage from the Lumical uh, for two configuration, for the tube and the cone configuration. Uh, of course, there are angles due to the shower developing the leakage is larger for the cone configuration, but nevertheless, the main message here is that it can be cured uh, uh, with a five millimeter iron cone that basically is reduces the number of uh, mostly low energetic secondaries up to, up to 70, 75%. So I, uh, I'm coming to my conclusion. Instrumentation of the very forward region is uh, very important for CPC, basically for every future E plus E minus collider as a precision machine. Uh, there are ex proven technologies to be considered as uh, lumical options. Uh, it seems that 10 to the minus 3 uncertainty of in luminosity, integral luminosity, is uh, uh, quite feasible with existing technology options from the considered MDI and mechanical issues. The main challenge is um, inner radius of the luminometer and uh, the uncertainty of the center of mass energies. Uh, with respect to these two, 10 to the minus 4 is more challenging. And the kind of a recommendation I would like to give that it, in order to cope with the complex systematics, because simulation is one thing when you really start the experiment, uh, uh, the things that you have not foreseen will emerge and life will become more complicated. It is recommended to keep the BABA event symmetrical. Uh, in this case, meaning uh, with luminometer centered at the outgoing beam. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, can you comment uh, about uh, having something in front of, of the calorimeter? You mentioned that in your talk, but then uh, you didn't say much. Uh. Ah, yeah, but that's <coughs> a tracker, which basically it yes. has a, such a low material budget that should not impact. Yes, it. I mean, if you would but, uh, have something else. But no, no, no. I, I, I'm considering uh, the design of uh, of the forward part of the vertex detector. Okay. I mean, uh, <coughs> should we? Uh, be careful and uh, and uh, say like uh, put uh, just one layer in front of you just uh, to help you do some tracking uh, or uh, or uh, I don't know if we put uh, three layers is too much. Uh, I, I, you, you understand what I'm asking, yes, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. That's a really valid question, and I think we should be very careful and uh, do a detailed simulation of the impact of any material that you would have in front. I mean, uh, without that, it's. Uh, Which will automatically translate into your luminosity and certainty. But, but you still prefer to have at least one point for tracking than nothing. Uh, well, it would help, as I said, with those points that I mentioned, like the calibration, uh, the electron photon, and so on. But it doesn't ne mean to put really a lot of material. No, no, no. I wasn't yes. thinking yes. about a yes. chunk yes. of uh, steel. Yes. I yes. was <laughs> thinking about a very, a very thin disk of pixels. Yes. For instance, yes. uh, the other the, the other thing uh, along the same lines, uh, uh, you mentioned uh, timing uh, and stuff. I mean, from such a detector in front, I could also have uh, some level of uh, timing uh, information that uh, could be useful to you, I imagine. But uh, at what level of of timing resolution would really help? Mm -hmm. I mean, if I do 100 picoseconds, is that sufficient, or, or you need, uh, or you need uh, 20 picoseconds? Because that makes a big difference in the, in the implementation, of course. Yes. Well, here, talking in this context about the timing, I was really referring to uh, the uh, eventual uh, uh, delays in the, in, the, in the bunch collisions in the, due to the uh, problems in beam synchronization and things like that. Concerning the timing, uh, uh, well, I think it, it depends on the technology option. It depends on the realization of the of readout. It depends on the occupancy, and uh, you have you would have to probably study in a full simulation all of these effects to know what is really the most optimal time uh, to read it out. 
silicon pixelia, which is giving you one point. It's mm. also giving you a time tag. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. <coughs> ah, oh, I see. Yeah, that's exactly well, right. I think but that you can, one, yeah. But, but you, you may say, well, if you do 100 picoseconds, ten, it's, of, it's absolutely useless. No, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> ten, ten, tenths of picoseconds. It's so tenths of, ten, picos ten ten tenths of picoseconds. picoseconds, yes. And, and finally, one last comment uh, in, uh, on uh, different, like, uh, relative to the calorimeter itself. Uh, it seems to me that if you want to have a very good control of the position of the acceptance, of the limits of the acceptance, mm -hmm. a silicon tungsten version seems to be much more adequate than having crystals where getting the with precision, the edge, the edge of something that you can measure with, with some pads uh, some, uh, properly designed uh, on, on, uh, on several silicon uh, wafers uh, is probably easier than getting the edge of, uh, of, of your crystals uh, yeah. at the same yeah. level of precision. Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, with this kind of precision stuff, you can go deeply as much as you want. There is one thing that we have not considered, and the ILC also does not have a solution for that. If you have a sampling time of calorimeters, you are not monitoring only a lumical as a whole, but you could have individual displacements of the sensors despite the supportive structure. So at ILC, they, they proposed the semi-transparent sen silicon sensors to monitor it with laser. Uh, but it was rather a kind of a conceptual solution mm -hmm. that has not been proven in the test being campaigns. So, what is, so, what is the fact that if you're talking about one micron, <laughs> you said one micron when you go 10 to the minus 4, are vibrations yes. themselves. Right? Yes, yes. Vibrations <laughs> in the structure yes. yeah. can yes. really yes. into yes. one micron yes. in an unpredictable way. Unfortunately, this is a pure mathematics. You see at FCC, it's two microns. It comes from the cross section. It's the phys physics itself of the Baba process. There's no, not really very yeah, much you, you can do it's about it. Yeah, I, I just wanted to point out that even with the sandwich type of calorimeter, this positioning issue, this is not an end, you know, to monitor uh, the lumical as a whole. The life gets complicated with displacements of individual sensors. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.